We are live. Listen, appreciate everybody being here. This is the weekly law show. It is DUI results with attorney Robert J. Schefter on the Shane train. Welcome. I know Shane. How's your hand? Doing well. All right, nice. Look good. So look, we're just going to get right into this. Yeah, let's get right into it. So the Pennsylvania Supreme Court just came down with a ruling that affects uh, the DUI field sobriety checkpoints. We're all familiar with those checkpoints. We've all been through them. And I think defense attorneys in general uh, have a real problem with them. Uh, they've been deemed not to be an invasion of your privacy, but I think overall we can agree that they really are. I mean, you're being stopped, you're being questioned for no valid reason. Um, the way that they've been approved is because there has to be a system, the way they're pulling over cars, and it's, in, it's all in the name of safety, and, and I understand that. We do want to keep DUI drivers off the road. I'm in full agreement with that. Yeah, so am I. That's uh, a wide net, though. Yeah, and I'll be, I'll be fine. If there are no more DUIs ever, that, that'll be fine. Uh, but we, we do believe that there is a, an invasion of privacy there, even though they've been upheld. This new case really doesn't deal with that. It's, it's interesting, but I'll tell you up front, it, it, it is going to have a limited effect because what's going to happen is law enforcement is going to correct this error. The DA's office is going to correct it. And moving forward, they'll make sure that their checkpoints aren't violating this ruling that just came out. But really, what it does mean, though, is for a limited window, the field sobriety checkpoints, most of the ones you're going to come across in York County, are, have been deemed illegal. And the reason is most of the field sobriety checkpoints that you go through involve multiple uh, jurisdictions, meaning police officers from lots of different departments, so they all come together and put a checkpoint together. And my understanding is that you know these take a lot of hours and a lot of uh, uh, people to put together. So it takes a lot of officers. It would drain one department too much for them to put it on individually. So what they do is they have these agreements between police departments. So if we have a checkpoint in York City, by law, only York City police officers can be involved with that because you can only be a police officer and only uh, fulfill your official duties in your jurisdiction. So to get, to get by that, to have other officers come in from York Area Regional or uh, North, Northern Regional or wherever, what they were doing is they have, would have a written agreement where the chief of one department would write to the other and say, hey, we want you to be involved with this. We're asking for your help. Uh, and they agree in writing to aid them. And they thought that that got them around what's called the uh, uh, Municipal Police Jurisdiction Act. And that says you can only be an officer where you are an officer. It, I call it the Dukes of Hazard law. I don't know. I'm old enough to remember, uh, I remember Dukes of Duke. Hazard, but if you remember the Dukes of Hazard, <laughs> Bo and Luke Duke would Run be screaming line. across the, the dirt road and Roscoe would be chasing them, and they'd get to the county line, Hazard County line, and they'd get past it, and then Roscoe has to stop, and he'd say, oh, those Duke boys. But So that that's to get around that, if you're in hot pursuit, if you're chasing someone and you get to the end of your jurisdiction, you don't have to stop. Then you know, The bad guy doesn't get away. You can still chase them. So that's an exception to that law. Another exception under that law says if the home jurisdiction, say if York City asks um, Northern Regional for help and assistance and aid, they're allowed to, to give it. So that's how they were getting around that law. They would just say, hey, we need your help in running this checkpoint. And up until this Supreme Court case, that has been fine. But now what the Supreme Court has said is, no, that's not the law. There's actually a separate, separate act about compliance and working together between governments, which says it's okay, but each government, each municipality has to have an ordinance in place that says we agree to work with this other jurisdiction for sobriety checkpoints, for example. So um, an attorney, this, was, this case originated out in Pittsburgh, a smart defense attorney said, you know, th this task force from different law enforcement agencies is violating this law because they don't have an ordinance. All they have is this letter, and we don't think this letter satisfies an exception under the Jurisdiction Act. So he challenged it, and the Supreme Court said, you know what, you're right. Uh, it doesn't matter that there's this Jurisdiction Act with an exception that says if there's an agreement, the Supreme Court said that's only for emergencies. So if there's an active crime going on and uh, a defendant suspect goes from one jurisdiction to another, the chief can pick up the phone and say, hey, 
chief in another department, we need your help, we need it now. That's what the statute, that exception was set up for, not these written agreements. And the, the case makes sense because if you're going to have this big, that's a, that's a government decision under the Government Act, not a police department act. So the police departments don't have authority to say, we're going to set up this checkpoint using officers from all over the place. The townships, the leaders of the townships need to have an ordinance that says that. So that gets a little deep into the, the actual reason for the decision, but the effect is this. If you were stopped and you have DUI charges right now in your county and it's active, if you've already been convicted and gone through the system, the, the law is not retroactive. There could be a challenge, but I don't see it. Most of the times when they, pass, when they have these rulings, they say it doesn't affect things in the past. But if you have an active case where you were stopped at a checkpoint, what we need to do is look and see if that checkpoint was run by multiple jurisdictions under this case, that checkpoint is illegal, which means the stop was illegal, which means everything that happens after the stop should be thrown out. So it's a huge impact for current cases. Would that be like the cases. last 30 days, 60 days? I know it would vary, but yeah, so generally... As long as your case is still active. So most cases, your typical, uh, let's say, first offense DUI, from the time you get the charges to the time it, you are... You get into ARD or plead guilty, you're talking six months, maybe up to a year. It can go longer, but I'd say six months is probably average. So if you have received your charges, but you haven't yet gotten into ARD or, or pled guilty, your case is still active and you have an opportunity through an attorney to file a motion to dismiss your case because the checkpoint was illegal under this latest newest ruling. So it is a huge case and has significant impact, but like I said from the outset, it's a limited time frame. So then definitely, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but yeah. make sure you contact, go to DUIResults.com. They can message you there. Your phone number is the best way. Call the office. Yes. Can they set up a free consultation? Absolutely. Their absolutely. Case? Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and you, may have, you may be halfway through the process and you may not have an attorney, that's fine. You can hire an attorney halfway through. You can hire an attorney if your case is next week. Uh, if you have if you have other representation and, and your attorney is not comfortable, doesn't know about this, that's fine too. You can consult with him or her and say, hey, I saw this. What do you know about it? And if they can handle it, fine. If not, you can respectfully say, hey, I'm going to go talk to this other attorney. And, uh, and I can certainly take a look at it. But the big thing we have to, we have to go back and find out from the DA if it's a multi-jurisdictional checkpoint. And I think, well, I shouldn't say most, but a lot of them are. A lot of them are because of the manpower that's required to set Yeah, up. I mean, in this area, I've seen them on North George Street and 83, and those that well, and I've seen are lots and lots of agencies. They're big ones. And those on George Street, I, I will so got, so almost so. guarantee you there, there are many, there are at least several police departments involved. So definitely if you were stopped there and got charges, uh, I would almost so someone's St. Patrick's Day weekend. Let's think when the most of them are happening, mm -hmm. right? Don't they do it the holidays? Yep. So this St. Patrick's Day, if you were out here, I know they had it out here or on North George, then that's probably going to be within that time. Oh, absolutely. Those cases are definitely still Because we're six months. So basically, if something probably happened beginning of this year, mm -hmm. this year, you're right. probably a candidate that might be able to, you right. know, if you didn't have the final, and is it a final charge when they said you're done, here it is? Well, how do they know? So if you have been accepted into the ARD program, then if you're actively in it, uh, that might not be too late. Uh, if you aren't eligible for ARD and you pled guilty and you were convicted, uh, then it's probably too late. You do have a, a certain 10 days to appeal after that. Uh, so if you were in court and you were sentenced and you were given probation or whatever, then most likely we're not going to be able to, to do anything about that case but if it's still active uh, it's definitely worth checking out so free consultation dui results uh, dot com attorney robert j Schefter, attorney at law right at leaders heights road there's the phone number give them a call uh text call that's your office number that's the office number 717-747-9048 obviously this facebook page please like it and then duiresults.com has your your uh website yep Yep, and everything's everything. there. Everything's there. Um, so next week, uh, do we know? Carly, hi. Otis, do we know what's going to episode? 
No. All right. Well, that's good. You always come up with something good. So, I do, and you always if, ask me about it. But if yeah, you want, if you have a case or you know of a case um, that has to do with DUI, some type of driving under the influence, you know, it's not just alcohol, drugs, or anything, driving, um, message, you can message his, the Facebook page. Right. And they'll get it direct. It's all confidential mm-hmm. and private, so you can do that, and, and you know you can say don't mention my whatever, and uh, you know you can help. And, and if it's something that he wants to talk about, uh, they can they can take a look at it. and You might hear your case, not specifically your name, right? But your we'll case about it. on the air. So right. please feel free to do that. Anything right. else? That'll do it. Thanks. Have, Have a good shame. weekend. You too. Don't drink and drive, or do right. drugs and drive. That's but right. if you do happen to be under suspicion of it. Please contact DUIResults.com. And law, street justice is not the right thing to do. Correct. So you want to go through the process, relax, calm down. They're not going to call you from the police car. Right. Right. They're not going to call you in jail. Probably not. It's afterwards when they get their charges. All right. Thank you all. Appreciate you all. Have a beautiful weekend. Stay safe out there. And if you do have suspicion of driving under the influence, please contact Attorney Robert J. Schefter, Attorney at Law.